Hey guys, today we'll be talking about the Raul Pass opening and it starts off with the moves e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and bishop to b5. Now, black has a few replies here. The most common and main lines are pawn to a6, which is the Murphy defense, and knight to f6, which is the Berlin defense. So for today's video, we are going to talk about the move knight to f6, the Berlin. The Berlin defense is considered to be a very solid opening with excellent drawing chances for black, making it a favorite among the top grandmasters. So the main line of the Berlin will go something like this. Castle captures pawn to d4, knight retreats, and after a series of captures, we get this position where a, a queen trade will occur. And even though black's king is unable to castle and he has a doubled doubled c pawns as you guys can see the computer just evaluates this position as 0.00, .00 as it's very easy for black to obtain a draw as he has the bishop pair and his pieces can activate very easily so of course we are not going to discuss such a boring variation like this so after knight takes e4 i'm going to recommend you the move rook to e1 attacking the knight on e4. Now, most of the time, black would drop his knight back to d6 to attack our bishop on b5. But if black tries to defend his knight with pawn to d5, this is actually a mistake because now we play pawn to d3, kicking away the knight. And it doesn't really matter where the knight retreats to c5, d6, or to f6. Any one of those moves, we play Knight takes e5 on the next move, utilizing this pin on the knight, black's knight on c6, and we have a second pin with our rook on the king, and this position is really already very dangerous for black, because for example, if let's say he tries to block the rook pin with one of his bishops, we just capture the knight, and after captures, captures, check, we win the rook on a8. If black tries to defend this pin with the other bishop instead, now we capture the knight on c6 with our bishop with check because after captures knight to c6 and again it's another easy win for white so black cannot play the move pawn to d5 and most likely he will play the move knight to d6 which is a very common move in the berlin attacking our bishop b5 now we capture the pawn on e5 with our knight and after knight captures instead of recapturing back immediately with our rook we are going to leave the knight on e5 and play a quiet developing rare move with knight to c3. So now according to the Lee Chess database, black has three options. He can capture our bishop on b5, he can play pawn to f6 trying to protect his knight on e5, or he can play the move bishop to e7 trying to castle immediately and getting out of the pin on the e-file. So let's take a look first what happens if knight takes b5. So after knight takes b5, now we recapture the, the knight on e5 with check, bishop e7, and even though we can capture back the knight on b5 with either our knight or our rook, we do not play either of those moves and we have an even stronger move with knight to d5, bringing in our second piece to attack this bishop on e7. If black doesn't do anything about it, for example, he plays a move like d6, we just capture with check, and this is easily winning for white. Now, if black decides to castle, we now we capture the bishop with our knight, check, king goes to h8, and we have an easy way to win with just knight captures bishop, followed by rook captures knight, which leads us to being one piece up. However, we have an even stronger move with the move queen to h5. And you might be wondering, well, what does that move do? What does queen h5 threaten? And here's a clue for you guys. It threatens checkmate into if it's white to move. So pause the video if you'd like to find out how does this mate into occur. And it's pretty easy. If black plays a move like pawn to d6, trying to attack the rook, here comes the checkmate into with a queen sacrifice, queen takes h7 check, king is forced to take, and rook slides over, rook h5 is checkmate as the knight covers these two squares. So black can try to prevent the checkmate with a move like pawn to g6, 
However, we just drop back the queen one square, queen to h4, creating another checkmate threat on f6. If black tries to block the checkmate as well with pawn to f6, now we just capture the pawn on g6 with our knight, utilizing this pin. Black can't capture back our knight, and doesn't really matter if he plays king g7 or king g8, the outcome will be the same. We capture the, the rook on f8 now. Again, we have another pin on the queen, so black can't capture our rook on e5. And after queen takes, now we re finally we recapture the knight on b5, and we're just a whole rook up in this position. Okay, so let's go back to the previous position, and we've seen what if black plays knight takes b5. Now let's see the second option with pawn to f6, trying to protect the knight on e5. Here we play very simple pawn to d4 move, use, utilizing our pin to push our pawn forward, and we want to recapture the knight on the next move. If black captures our knight on b5, again, we are going to ignore this knight on b5 over here, and we're going to capture this knight on e5 instead. After black plays knight takes c3, attacking our queen, we are again going to ignore this knight, and we're going to play pawn takes f6, giving discover check. The king has to move to f7, because if black tries to block with the bishop, we just capture the bishop, if and we don't mind our queen getting taken, because after pawn takes, promote the queen, king takes, bishop g5 is just checkmate. So black has to play king to f7, and again, we're going to ignore this threat on our queen, and we're going to capture another pawn. Because if knight takes, we are going to take the rook this time, promote into a queen, the knight is trapped on d1, and there's too many threats on the black king, and it's an easy win for white. So black can't capture our queen on d1, and let's say he captures the pawn on g7 with the king. Now we're going to play queen to g4 check, king to f7, queen h5 check, and doesn't really matter if he plays king g7 or king g8, are going to play bishop to g5, and as you guys can see, this poor queen on d8 is already trapped. So the only rear try for black is to capture back with the bishop. Now we're going to play queen to h5 check, king f8, and a similar idea we had earlier, bishop to g5, trying to trap this queen on d8. But now black can block this threat with bishop to f6, trying to protect the queen, but now it leaves the h6 square open, so we give check queen to h6. If black plays a move like king to g8, we have rook to e8, and that's just checkmate in the next move. So he has to block with the bishop, bishop to g7, and now we play a really strong queen to e5 move, utilizing this pin that we have on the king. As black bishop cannot capture our queen because of the pin, and if he captures this way in instead, we're going to capture this rook and win the game easily. And there's no rear defense for black, as there's just too many threats coming on the king. And if he play a move like rook to g8, trying to protect the bishop, queen to f5 is just checkmate. Alright, so we have already discussed two options with knight takes b5 and pawn to f6, and both of the options doesn't seem too good for black. So what's the correct move for black to play then? He has to play bishop to e7 and try to get his king to safety as soon as possible. So now we play rook takes e5, and most likely black would just castle, because if he plays knight takes b5, remember, we're going to ignore this knight, we are not going to capture with any of our pieces, and we're going to play knight to d5 instead, as shown in the first option earlier on. So black castles, and our bishop is under attack, and we don't want to lose our bishop, so we're going to play the move bishop to d3. Now at first glance, this might seem like a bad move because it just blocks our d-pawn from advancing, which blocks our bishop as well, right? And you might be wondering why are we copying black by putting a piece, our bishop or the knight, in front of our d-pawn to block our pieces. But the bishop on d3, bishop to d3 move actually serves a different purpose and the bishop is actually eyeing this pawn here on h7 to create strong attacking threats. Now it's not easy for black to, to develop his pieces. As mentioned earlier, the knight, this knight blocks his pawn from advancing, which blocks his bishop's development as well. So black will most likely play bishop to f6, attacking our rook, 
trying to free up his pieces. Now we retreat our rook this way, rook to e3 instead, to set up a really nasty attack. Because if black is not careful and plays a careless, natural move like pawn to b6, for example, trying to develop his bishop this way, this is actually almost game over for black because now we see the whole idea of the move bishop to d3 as we can play bishop takes h7 check, sacrificing the bishop. And after king takes, queen h5 check, king to g8, rook to h3, and is checkmate on either the h7 or h8 square. Now some of you might think that, oh, but a strong player would never fall into this, such a simple trap, right? Wrong, because a few months ago, a 2500 Fide Master was playing against another 2500 Grandmaster on Lee Chess, and the Grandmaster actually blundered this position. He did not play the move pawn to b6 over here, but instead the Grandmaster played pawn to c6 as black, and the game continued with the same idea. Bishop takes h7, king takes, queen h5 check, king to g8, rook to h3, and the only way to stop checkmate was to play bishop to h4, sacrificing the bishop, rook takes, and now the Grandmaster played pawn to f6, opening up this escape route for the king, and there's no queen h7 or queen h8 checkmate now. However, this is still a pretty easy position for white to play, and the Fide Master continued with the move pawn to d4, trying to bring in another attack attacker into the position. Black played queen e8, offering a queen trade, white declined of course, queen h7 check, king f7, bishop f4, and white won pretty easily, as all his pieces will be coming into the attack soon. We even have bishop h6 threats, and it's an easy win for white, as you guys can see on this valuation. Even though white is only up a pawn, due to black's unsafe king and undeveloped pieces, it's already plus almost 4.5 for white. Alright, so let's go back and discuss what should black have done instead to prevent this threat of bishop takes h7. The easiest way is just to play rook to e8, offering a rook trade, and also by moving the rook, black can create an escape route this way with his king. So here, we're going to play the move knight to d5, threatening to capture the bishop, and also threatening to play rook takes e8 check, and if queen takes, we have knight c7 as well. So black would most likely recapture recap our rook, we recapture back with the d-pawn, and after a move like pawn to c6, kicking away our knight, we just capture the bishop, queen takes, and now even though white, as white we are not up in any material, we have the bishop pair, and this is pretty easy for white to play, as black's pieces are still undeveloped, and we have threats like queen to h5, threatening to capture, or we could even play a move like pawn to e4, followed by queen e2 and pawn to e5, or queen to h5, followed by e5 as well. And as you guys can see, the comp the chess.com stockfish evaluates this position as plus 0 0.52, but if you run this position with a stronger engine like stockfish 16, it would actually show white bin plus one ahead. And that's all for our video on the Raul Lopez Berlin defense. We'll probably cover the move pawn to a6, the Murphy defense, in another video. But for now, congratulations on learning how to demolish the Berlin defense. If you're up for another challenge, check out our video where even Stockfish couldn't solve this puzzle. Thanks for watching, and we we'll see you in the next video.